μαθαίνοντας τα μαθήματα της κρίσης της προηγούμενης του ευρώ, αναστήλαμε όλους τους δημοσιονομικούς περιορισμούς του Συμφώνου Σταθερότητας για τρία χρόνια. Δημιουργήσαμε σε χρόνο ρεκόρ ένα νέο χρηματοδοτικό εργαλείο αξίας 100 δισεκατομμύριων ευρώ, το πρόγραμμα SURE, μέσω χάρη στο οποίο μπορέσαμε να αντέξουμε και να στηρίξουμε τους βραχυπρόθεσμα άνεργους. Η Ευρωπαϊκή Κεντρική Τράπεζα ενίσχυσε τις προσπάθειες ρευστότητα με ένα κολοσιαίο πρόγραμμα αγοράς ομολόγων περίπου 1,8 τρισεκατομμύρια ευρώ που μείωσε το κόστος δανεισμού Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my great pleasure to be the moderator of uh, one of the opening sessions in this year's Delphi Economic Forum, and it is my great honor that our institution, the Institute for Sustainable Development of the European Public Law Organization, is a content partner of this year's Delphi Economic Forum, and uh, we plan to uh, stay in this relationship for a long time. Um, this year's forum is looking into a number, a very large number of issues, among which uh, there's a lot of, con of content on environmental, social, and uh, perspectives that have to do with the green and blue development of Europe and the world. In this session today, I'm very happy to welcome two very good friends, uh, Minister Yanis Plagiotakis, the Minister of Maritime Affairs and Insular Policy of the Hellenic Republic. Welcome, Yanni. And uh, Minister Ricardo Serrao Santos, the Minister of Maritime Affairs of the Republic of Portugal. Um, I should have said to welcome again, because with the Delphi Economic Forum in March, we organized the specific forum on the blue economy, and we had the honor to have both speakers with us at this session. And today we will be building up on this. Um, I do not want to take too much time in my introduction. I just want to say that the blue economy is increasingly becoming one of the heated and most important sectors for economic and social development in Europe. Uh, a number of studies have shown that the potential of the GDP contribution to the overall European economy goes beyond 10%, even 20% in some cases. And the many different aspects that can be included in the blue economy include not only shipping and transportation, but also coastal tourism, aquaculture, fisheries, bioeconomy, um, you name it. There's so many, many different aspects and so much potential. So today we'll be carrying out a fireside chat between the two ministers. And uh, the way we'll do this is that I will uh, address to them a couple of questions on which they will be invited to participate and give their points of view. Uh, noting also that uh, having with us Ricardo Serrao Santos, the minister from the Republic of Portugal, is a very important point because Portugal is currently uh, presiding the European Union. So in your capacity, you are also the president for maritime affairs of the entire European Union. And having said that, I would like to start with you actually, Ricardo, after welcoming you again, and address the following question to you. In the context of the Portuguese presidency that I mentioned for the European Union, what are the priorities envisaged by Portugal for the development of the blue economy? And what is your assessment of progress to date? Okay, thank you very much, Spiros. Uh, good morning, Ioannis. Uh, and let me begin by a very recent um, event that occurred in Oporto during the, the Portuguese presidency, which is, was the Oporto Social Summit, where uh, it, took, uh, it took place three days ago. And uh, it was reinforced the need to um, reduce inequalities and make the social commitment and the social pillar of the European Union and uh, the strategies more strong and uh, to create, in fact, new jobs 
and to lead the Europe on a kind of uh, reskilling uh, re and social protection in climate and, uh, and digitalization. But uh, the fact is that what we have in front of us is not only the reduction of CO2 that is in fact important or, um, or the uh, digitalization of our societies. It is also, and mo uh, it is also the issues about jobs. And these two things that are priorities in the European Union, um, climate change, uh, combat climate change and uh, uh, reduction of CO2 and digitalization are, in fact, uh, possibilities to recreate our economies, to recycle, uh, um, reskilling our, our people for new jobs and um, uh, new productivity. And uh, these are instruments for the future. And, uh, of course, as in my ministry, uh, the Ministry of Sea Affairs, in, in Portugal we call it Ministry of the Sea, um, we are focused in two main areas, um, two or three main areas. One is the common fisheries policy for the use of conservation and use of uh, marine resources, and the other is the issue of integrated maritime policy, where blue economy, in fact, will be central as uh, we will intend to show in June. And, uh, and the other is the issue of food food from the oceans and food for, from the sea. And in that sense, you want to reshape the idea of a sustainable seafood and uh, the, from, uh, from, fork to f from farm to fork, because I think that in the original strategy, the sea is not uh, completely focused and you want to stress this, uh, the, the, this part. When we talk about the common uh, fisheries policy, and we'll be discussing, of course, the new a reform of the common fisheries policy, we want to have the issues of sustainability, but also the issues of equitability. And when we find, uh, talk about sustainability, of course, it's sustainable in the sea, sustainable of our resources, sustainability of our, our biodiversity, but also sustainability of our coastal communities that live from, 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 these, uh, research, uh, uh, from these resources. And all these must be grounded in, uh, in a good and uh, a strong um, scientific uh, basis. At the same time, we, of course, will have in, uh, in discussions, settled discussions, as you probably know, the control regulation on fisheries, because, of course, uh, in the, there is a new regulation that is giving a lot of discussion in the European, in the, in the European Council. And uh, um, in June, we will uh, we will organize a, minister, a fisheries ministerial meeting in Lisbon on the 15th of, of June. Um, of course, our advances on a, a integrated maritime po po policy uh, and are fully dedicated to, to blue economy. And in the 8th of June, and I hope that the Minister Ioannis will be joining us in uh, the 8th of June in Lisbon, uh, we will organize um, uh, a meeting that uh, is precisely to discuss the blue economy on the scope of the Green, of the green Deal. Because there will be no, no Green Deal without the blue component and uh, the issue. We know the, the importance of the oceans for the welfare of our, and the health of our planet and our societies. And this, um, this, uh, uh, council, the, the conclusions of the Council on Integrated Marine, Maritime Pol Policy will be uh, around four pilar, pillars. Health, knowledge, prosperity, and social equity. And when I say health, this means uh, healthy oceans and seas to support life and uh, welfare of the people, knowledge and awareness for better management of oceans and seas, and we will have a lot of things to do on these uh, kind of things, uh, a sustainable blue economy to support Europeans' recovery and prosperity, and this came with this unexpected pandemic, or expected, but in fact it occurred and, and hurt very much our economies and our societies, and also a sustainable economy that is socially fair, equitable, and, um, and, um, sustain and in very, very inclusive. Um, so that's uh, our agenda for the, till the end of um, 
our uh, mandate as presidencies of the European Union. And uh, of course, the common fisheries policy the, and um, the blue economy on the scope of the Marit uh, European uh, integrated maritime policy are central. Thank you so much, Ricardo. It's a very rich and diverse agenda. And uh, I think the, the issues, as I said, related to the blue economy are so wide and so deep at the same yeah, time very, that you need to take into account all the points that you very, mentioned to be able to make a change and drive the agenda ahead for the European Union. And you Union. have had also the issues of um, the emergent, like uh, bioeconomy is uh, really a, exactly. a, a big exactly. target in our country. This and, and Portugal is yeah. a leader in many types and issues related to research. We'll come to this in a yeah. minute, but I'd Thank like you. to turn now to the Greek minister, uh, Minister Plagiotakis. Yanni, uh, Greece is a country that is connected with the sea in every way. I mean, uh, we, we all know that at least half of the population of Greeks consider that they have salty water in their veins, like you do um, in, in many ways, coming from Citia in Crete. Uh, in this sense, what are the key parameters that define Greece's economic and social development in relation to the blue economy? Well, thank you, Spiros, for your uh, kind invitation. Thanks, of course, the organizer for having the opportunity to participate as a speaker in uh, this year's Delphi Economic Forum. Well, Greece is a nation which um, uh, its economic prosperity and, of course, employment relies heavily on blue economy, namely shipping, cruising, port activities, fisheries, and, of course, coastal uh, tourism. And um, as you can obviously understand, uh, blue economy is on top of our governmental agenda. Uh, it couldn't be otherwise because uh, you are talking about a nation with more than a hundred inhabited uh, small or large scale islands and uh, as well as with a coastline of 14,000 kilometers. So blue economy uh, contributes uh, approximately 14.2 percent of all national jobs and this is the highest uh, rate within the, the European Union and approximately uh, holds 25% of our GDP. So um, uh, there is a need to even enhance this number. And how can we achieve this? We can achieve this by heavily um, uh, invest in our uh, human capital. Therefore, training, education. Um, we are almost ready to launch a campaign to attract uh, new people in the shipping industry so they can uh, start careers at sea. Um, we are going to launch this campaign in association with our union of Greek ship owners. Um, so we feel that uh, we can succeed, we can attract young people uh, to the, uh, particularly to the shipping uh, industry where Greece, of course, is the leading nation with respect to the ship owning. Uh, Greek ship owners control more than 58% uh, uh, of the uh, total European fleet and almost one-fifth of the uh, world fleet. So with respect to the, uh, with, to the islands where Greece has a competitive advantage, uh, we are facing uh, major challenges, opportunities uh, as a result of the different variations inside, um, distances from the mainland, governance issues. But the main component of the uh, Greek island is, is insularity, which often comes with uh, energy dependency, um, transportation cost, limited um, economic diversifications. But at the same time, it comes with um, uh, renewable energy prospects um, unique ecosystems. So, uh, because of this uh, particularity, let's say, uh, for Greece, two, two months ago, um, we transformed a unique insular policy framework. Um, in other words, a holistic approach on how we can develop our insular areas, taking advantage, of course, all the uh, necessary uh, uh, resources. And, of course, uh, we um, um, accomplish that by introducing new financial tools. New financial tools to support 
um, public investment, let's say port infrastructure, private investment, and also uh, to support and enhance uh, island entrepreneurship, and last but not least, uh, to uh, secure innovation to blue economy uh, businesses. So it's, uh, it's very important in terms of uh, European Union to preserve this competitive advantage um, of the shipping uh, industry. And uh, uh, let us hope that uh, in terms of uh, European Union, um, there will be uh, uh, certain measures uh, in order uh, to uh, sustain uh, the uh, shipping industry and, of course, uh, in terms of uh, uh, energy resources. But uh, I do believe that uh, Greece still have a major competitive advantage uh, in terms of blue economy uh, issues. And uh, in our ministry, uh, we have already elaborated uh, this advantage. Thank you very much. Actually, I think it's, it's very important what you say that Greece looks at the specificity of its insularity because I don't think there's any other country in Europe that has such a deep characteristic related to island life and to all the types of economic activity. And I'm very happy that this is an issue that is brought up to the level of the European Union because it needs to be dealt with as such. And I'm really happy that the government also sees it as not a problem, but as an opportunity for development. And we see this with interconnections for renewable energy, with all the developments that you said. But let me come back to you uh, again uh, with a question specifically about shipping that you mentioned. Uh, if you say shipping, everybody understands Greece and vice versa. Uh, <laughs> it's been known throughout the years for the seafarers, yeah. for the ship owners, and so on. And, uh, Greece holds a historic role in shipping, but things are changing because uh, of the need to address climate change. There is a lot of change also happening with the guidance of the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, uh, moving towards the adoption of new standards for emissions for shipping. And my question to you is, do you see this as an obstacle or an opportunity? Well, clearly, Spiros, uh, this is an opportunity. Good to hear this. Uh, an opportunity uh, to successfully transition towards uh, a clean and energy sources to decarbonizing the, the shipping industry. But uh, there are caveats, of course. Uh, we need to know uh, the, the regulatory framework uh, in which the transition will take place. And to, we need to secure that this is the right one. For example, and everybody should realize that uh, shipping is a global industry. Therefore, it requires global rules and regulations. So in any case, particularly in the case of the European Union, uh, we must avoid um, uh, regionalism or unilateral measures that can harm the competence and the profitability uh, of the uh, sector. And um, I feel uh, the European Union is currently um, contemplating introducing its own measures uh, which may harm negotiations at global level and that lead to a fragmented uh, regulatory landscape. Um, another aspect that we need to take into account is that um, IMO is uh, the sole regulatory monitoring uh, organization that guarantees global la level playing field. This is absolutely uh, the case. Uh, and in Greece, we were very much in favor of uh, international maritime um, organization, uh, where um, IMO back in 2018, it reached a, a historic uh, agreement. Um, um, this agreement was backed also by all European Union member states, and the agreement was to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008. Uh, also, just recently, I am, I, just recently uh, IMO 
have uh, introduced a um, well-balanced package of technical and uh, operational uh, short-term measures applicable to existing ships. And also, uh, today I'm a decarbonization strategy is underway. So uh, overall, uh, everybody I think uh, should realize, uh, and it is important to say, that um, despite the fact that um, uh, the shipping industry globally, I'm talking, carries 90% of the global freight, it contributes less than 3% of the carbon dioxide emissions. It, it's very important to note. And uh, also, um, in terms of uh, uh, retaining the sustainability uh, of the sector and the profitability, uh, it is important to note that shipping is a, is a very complex and diverse industry. Uh, so every uh, blue economy sector in the shipping industry must realize and must be involved for example, the shipyards, the engine manufacturers, the oil supplies, uh, the refineries. So uh, for the regulators, it is important to know uh, that shipping is a pretty complex uh, industry. We need to know all the financial model. We need to know all the various aspects of the, uh, of the shipping business. Uh, but. Um, uh, for my conclusion, I, I do believe certainly this is uh, an opportunity that uh, we need to take into account, but uh, I need to emphasize that uh, shipping uh, overall is, is a global business, uh, is, is an international business. That's why we need uh, to avoid inappropriate or impractical measures that can harm uh, the competitiveness of the sector. Thank you very much, Yanni. Uh, I think what you, what you say about both the complexity and the, uh, the, the deep change that needs to undergo in the shipping sector is a challenge, of course, but exactly this is why I agree with you, it's an opportunity. And if it's any measure, it's very interesting to share with you that, uh, as you probably don't know, the European Public Organization is also an academic institution. So we do PhD courses and master's courses and so on. Uh, the first PhD course that was requested from us, and we're starting it right now, is uh, done by a person who is an owner of a small shipping company, and he wanted to study with us about specifically sustainable investment for this change in shipping. Mm -hmm. So things are changing, and I think it's moving in this direction. Uh, and innovation will be very important in that, but on innovation, I promise I will come back to you, <laughs> Ricardo. And my question to you is that, Portugal has already invested strongly in innovation and new technologies. And uh, if I'm not wrong, it is now included in the group of strong innovators in the EU. Yeah. So on the highest level, yeah. and congratulations for that. Um, how does this translate specifically to the blue economy uh, and the work that you're doing? Yeah, one, something that we identify that we must, uh, in fact, improve our ability to transform scientific knowledge and into innovation and in profitable business and uh, in jobs. As there is a road still to do in this kind of, uh, of issue. And we understand now that you have to do that while protecting also the, the environment and, uh, and uh, also restoring marine ecosystems. Uh, Portugal understood a uh, long time ago that, uh, in fact, science, technology, education, investment in, in financing uh, are essential and uh, we move to support startups and spin-offs that are spread uh, around the, the, the country with a set of incubators and also accelerators in the, in the, in the issue of blue, blue economy. I must say that, in fact, blue economy or the economy of the sea as in Portugal as, um, is, is um, a solid ground. And if we look at the indicators during the, um, the financial crisis 2008-2013, we, we have what we call a satellite account of the sea. We can see that in terms of um, uh, growth added value, it improved. And in terms of jobs, it decreased less than the general economy. So it's a, it's a resilient 
in a certain sense, a uh, component of the, of the economy. Um, I'm very pleased to be here with uh, uh, the minister from, from Greece. In fact, we are two maritime countries, and uh, Greece is, has built uh, uh, the, the, the civilization and the democracy in the Mediterranean and does uh, been basing his economy, in fact, in, uh, in the maritime, maritime sector. Portugal is also uh, a country that is devoted to the sea, in front of the sea, and so uh, is uh, trying to invest more and more. In, uh, we, are, we have now uh, finished and, uh, and uh, entered in the, in, the European, uh, in the European Commission our uh, plan for resilience and recovery. And uh, the sea, of course, is one of the components of this, of this, of this area. Uh, we uh, want to focus very, we have a lot of investments now in the hub of blue, blue biotech, it's spread in, uh, in five areas in Portugal that uh, creates a kind of, 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 of cluster. We have a very active forum for the economy of the sea, the Oceano Forum 2021, and uh, that uh, builds around all the partners in terms of, of economy. Our main aims now are, in fact, the issues of bio, bio, blue biotech. We have strong interests on, the, on continue building up the, the, um, the sector of aquaculture, partly dedicated on, uh, on um, multi-trophic and exploring new, new, new species. And now that, uh, but the, this aquaculture is strongly linked with the issues of technology and engineering and uh, also connects with the issues of uh, uh, maritime renewable energy. So there is a component of uh, networking in, in all these areas, including robotics, that are important. And um, we, we don't have a sea that in the past was very good for agriculture. But now that technology has developed, it's used like offshore, um, offshore um, aquaculture or offshore uh, sea wind farms, become uh, more established and the, the technology is, is controlled. Um, in the uh, resilience and rec well, but the time is passing and I don't yes. want to take my... We need, we need to, to wrap <laughs> up a bit, but thank you for touching on the issue of investment. And I was actually meaning to ask you uh, both, but you have already covered on the side of Portugal, that within the 150 billion that will come for, for the Green Deal, we see a lot of investment. So, Jan, yeah. if you would like to just add one final word about the investment potential for Greece, and then we'll have to wrap this up. Well, uh, I will conclude uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what Greece believes will be uh, the best option uh, uh, with regard to the European uh, uh, Green Deal. Uh, we do believe that the, the, the European Green Deal should financially support R&D into new fuels, because at the present times there are no alternative fuels for ocean-going vessels. So, uh, if you would like to take into advantage uh, uh, Green Deal, Green Deal must uh, financially support R&Ds into new fuels, without which uh, the shipping industry cannot decarbonize. So, if the European Union deems necessary uh, uh, to include shipping in the European Union ETS uh, scheme, uh, Greece will support the creation of um, uh, a dedicated fund uh, which will collect monies from the ships and investment in RDs projects and pilots aiming at developing and um, commercializing. Uh, the new uh, generation of low zero emission fuels. Uh, this is actually the, um, the proposal uh, in terms uh, of Greece because uh, we need to uh, uh, take into account that the, uh, uh, the European... Oh, we'll to... Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> the, the, the European fleet, the European fleet is a geopolitical asset and we cannot afford to lose it. Exactly. And I think this is very important because what we need to make sure is that this investment actually reinforces the competitive advantages of all European countries yes. and especially 
the ones that, as you said, Ricardo, like Greece and Portugal are at the yeah. forefront of the yeah. history of Europe with the sea. So with this, I wish we'd had one more hour to discuss okay. about this thing. <laughs> okay. But we'll find more opportunities. I want to thank you very much for being with us at the Delphi Economic Forum. And thank please you. rest assured that we'll do much more on this. Thank you. Thank, right. you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.